So we're going to move into my home turf, motorsport, um, and our first speaker, our first speaker, I spent a lot of time with probably over the last two years for a lot of the work that we've been doing at Motives. She's one of the most dependable people uh, that I know, definitely within the STEM space, um, when it comes to keeping the ladder down. Um, and her journey started out in North London. I got a lot of North Londons, or well, North Londoners here, um, so she's from there. Um, and it was when she was in secondary school that I guess automotive and motorsport, that kind of interest came about. I realized that you did an EPQ. I didn't know that I did an EPQ. I was, I was saying to someone here, so an EPQ is an extended project qualification. So if you are doing your A-levels and you're thinking, I want to express myself outside of these courses, an EPQ is a good thing to do. Um, so we definitely kind of recommend that. Um, and then she then went on to study an integrated master's degree in automotive engineering at University of Leeds. And then after spending some time at McLaren, She's now at the Ops Mercedes, um, who of course I support, um, and she is a mechanical design engineer. So let's please welcome uh, Biftu. Hi everyone. Yeah, so my name is Biftu Abagodu. Um, I'm an automotive engineer. Um, and I'll be taking you through basically my journey up until um, where I am today um, and a bit about my background as well um, and hopefully answering some questions later on too. So, A little bit about me. Um, so going all the way back, um, so my parents are both from Ethiopia. I'm Oromo um, and they were born and raised in Ethiopia um, and emigrated to Germany, uh, got married and had me and my sister. Um, just a bit of context for those two pictures. So for the top picture, Basically, I was trying to dig um, through some baby pictures to try and find like, any evidence of me being like proper engineer from early on to try and prove like, it was ingrained in me. you know. Um, and Because a lot of the time when it comes to like, speaking to colleagues um, and speaking to course mates, they're like, oh, you know, I popped out of the womb and I was doing Lego. Um, and then I knew that I was going to be an engineer. Um, so I was trying to do some digging. And the closest thing I could find was just me and some pajamas with cars on it. So that's what you're going to get today. Um, and this is all basically just to say that you don't have to have had that sort of ingrained in you from a young age. You know, I didn't grow up in, like, I don't know, my dad's garage building motorcycles at the age of five. Like, that's not my story. Um, and so that's all just to say that that doesn't have to be your story either. Um, not to say that, you know, that's a bad thing. I wish I did. Um, but there are different routes into it, and you can basically decide what you want to do. Like, there's no late way of doing it, basically. Um, and that's definitely how it was for me. So... The next best thing that I could find was this picture at the bottom um, of me getting my first maths award at school. So this was all in Germany as well. I was like seven or eight, very proud of myself. I don't like this picture, but my parents have it very dearly to their hearts, so I, put, I thought I'd put it in. Um, and then at the age of nine is when we moved to the UK. So I grew up in Tottenham, North London, um, and went to school there. Um, but I was born in Germany, so I spoke no English. No English, just vibes, sitting in class, not understanding anything. Um, and yeah, it, it sounds quite soppy, but I always say, like, I sat in school, I didn't know what was going on, like, I didn't speak the language. It's already hard enough, like, trying to make friends and getting to know um, other kids and trying to fit in. Um, didn't speak the language. And I always say, I was sat in maths, because I knew I was good at maths and I really liked it. But it was the one lesson at school where the language barrier didn't mean anything. And I could really just find that familiarity bubble and get on with it and feel like I was part of the class and I could just get on with it and feel like um, I could be the best I could be in maths. Um, and I think naturally from maths, STEM started growing. Um, the sciences, GCSEs, I started really enjoying. Um, went to secondary school at Hornsey School for Girls in North London. Um, and that was when I really started thinking, well, maybe engineering is what I want to do. Um, so I started um, watching Formula One became a massive Lewis Hamilton fan, I still am. Um, and that was when I thought, okay, so like A-levels are starting to come around. I, I need to decide what I want to do, and I think maybe engineering is what I want to do. Um, so that's what I did. So in A-levels, I did uh, physics, maths, uh, economics, and biology, and EPQ. Um, and then it was time to apply for university. Um, by this point, I made engineering my whole like, personality at school. Like, I was like, I'm going to be an engineer. I'm going to work with Lewis Hamilton. I'm going to be in Formula One. Um, my friends were sick and tired of me. 
my teachers were also like, they were backing me up, but at the same time, they're like, okay, you need to relax a little bit. Um, but um, I persevered, um, and I, it came to UCAS. Um, and initially, I applied for mechanical engineering um, and did my application, got rejected from Cambridge, got rejected from Imperial. I was like, okay, this is looking a bit sticky now. Um, and I did an access to Leeds course, which basically they look at your background, uh, sort of progression to university from the area that you grew up in, things like your household income, circumstances and things like that, um, to basically see if you qualify for this course that you do just before university over the summer. Um, so that's what I did. Um, and then if you pass that course, they lower your grade boundaries as well, your grade requirements. Um, so that's what I did. Uh, got into Leeds. Um, got into Leeds train station. Due to like family circumstances, I moved up by myself. So it was just me and my suitcase in Leeds train station. Um, and that's when it sunk in, like, this is it. Like, all through school, you work through getting good grades, getting into uni. Like, that's what my parents drilled into me. Um, so I got my good grades, and I got into uni, and that was that, like, I was there. And that was when it really dawned on me, like, this is, like, a beginning. It's where I wanted to work towards, but what's next, you know? Um, and I found first year really, really difficult, because it was, like, it was all I was working towards, and now all of a sudden, a door has opened, and I don't know where I'm going. Um, and so during my university um, sort of journey, second year was when I really sort of picked myself up, and I was like, okay, university isn't the end goal here. It was at some point during A-levels, but now I need to think about my next steps. Um, so I picked myself up. I knew I wanted to work in Formula One, so I joined Formula Student, um, and that's where I did my third year um, bachelor's project. So I did the engine intake system design uh, for my third year dissertation. Um, and that was in conjunction with Autodesk and Additive X as well as a sponsorship, because we had no money. <laughs> so uh, we had to basically work with a different company to try and get them to sponsor us, sponsor manufacture, uh, make our parts. Uh, so we managed to do that. And my project was showcased um, at a 3D printing convention up in Birmingham. Um, and then after my third year, I did a placement year. So I worked at BMW Group. Um, working on high voltage battery design for electric vehicles of the future um, as a design engineer. Um, and then coming back from that, I continued on to my fourth year of university. Um, by this point, I had, um, I forgot to mention, so I applied for mechanical and in my third year, I switched to automotive because I was definitely sure that that's what I wanted to do. Um, and in my fourth year, my, um, my, my, my master's dissertation was uh, designing the Formula Student electric vehicle chassis design. So. Um, that was, I was very sort of sure that I wanted to do design. Um, I knew that CAD was what I enjoyed, um, designing parts, whatever it is along, um, across the car, as long as I'm designing, I'm happy. Um, so that's what I chose to do for my project. Um, and I was honored to get the um, best project award from the, the iMakey for my project in my fourth year. Um, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then it was graduation. So this was my graduation. Um, at the end of 2021 was when I graduated, but because it was the end of COVID, um, I couldn't really have my ceremony or anything. But luckily last year in spring, uh, I finally had my ceremony and got to bring my parents, very proud of me. Um, I wore my Oromo traditional dress as well, which is a very proud moment. Um, and yeah, so I got my first class uh, master's in automotive engineering. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so I graduated, um, and then it was time to look for a job. Um, and because, again, coming off of the end of COVID, half of the like, graduate schemes that I wanted to apply to weren't running, or they were having like, less capacity. So I was literally just scrambling, like, trying to find anything related to cars that I could do um, at the end of my degree. Um, and finally, I got an offer through uh, at, in July, so just after graduating, uh, from McLaren Automotive. So that's where I went. Um, so this was uh, summer of 2021. I started in August. Um, and my role there was working within the body and white team. I was an associate design engineer. Um, and my focus was working on front crash structures. Um, so yeah, as I said, a design engineer. So ma mainly my work is to do with CAD and pot design. Um, and focusing on crash structures meant that I had to work with different teams within um, the department and also other departments working on things like um, cost efficiency, weight efficiency, 
uh, packaging uh, optimization, um, and crash safety. So the, the aim of, of the role is obviously to design a system that's going to absorb as much energy as possible in the event of a crash. Um, and there's loads of different um, rules and regulations that cars have to pass in order to be sold um, and then drive on the road. Uh, so that's what I did. Um, and then that brings us on to today. So today I am a graduate mechanical design engineer at Mercedes F1. Um, and at the moment, my focus day to day is working on the America's Cup. Um, if you haven't heard of the America's Cup, it's basically, um, this was surprising to me actually when I was looking into it. Uh, I should have known this before I applied, but um, the America's Cup is actually the oldest um, running competition or sporting competition in the world today, uh, which I had no idea about before I joined the team. Um, and it's basically, uh, we design a race boat that we sail um, and we compete internationally. So the next America's Cup is next year in October 2024. So that's what we're working towards. Um, and in my role, I work as part of the hydraulics design team. Um, so basically, a lot of the systems on the boat are hydraulically powered, which means that there's loads of systems and parts in the, in the boat that I have to design as part of the team as well. Um, and I guess the whole reason that we're here today, which is DE&I in STEM or diversity in STEM, um, it's obviously going to be a topic very close to my heart because there's not many people that look like me at work or in uni or anything. I'm used to being the only woman in a group, the only black person in a group, the only black woman in a team. Um, and so I think during my university course especially, so um, coming from Tottenham, a girls' school, very diverse, surrounded by girls in STEM, to then being at Leeds train station, realizing this is it, um, and sitting on a course of 200 odd people and being the only black girl in that room, um, it made me realize that I have to do something about it. Even if it's just me as one person, I have to do something in order to make sure that I can be the person that I wish I had when I was at that stage in my life. Um, and so it meant that, you know, um, especially being like the eldest daughter, the eldest person, or the eldest kid in a family, not having like a, an older cousin or a sibling to ask about UCAS, about universities, about what courses to apply to, um, it meant that being a STEM ambassador, for example, was really, really important to me because it meant that I could provide that service to someone else who might not have the same uh, person to refer to. Um, so being a STEM ambassador, um, so during my McLaren days, I used to go to schools, bring McLarens out, which is really cool. We've got one outside as well. Um, get the kids to ask, start asking questions, just intrigued. Um, um, and telling them about what I do day to day, get them thinking, obviously not trying to force them to be engineers, they don't have to be, but just trying to get them thinking um, and about a career in engineering if that's something that they're interested in. Um, I'm also part of uh, the RC Vision Advisory Board. So RC Vision is a venture which um, aims to get kids involved in, uh, in STEM subjects through radio controlled car racing, which is really interesting. Um, and I think James is gonna cover a little bit more about this later, but I'm also part of Driven By Us. Uh, which is a similar venture, uh, which aims to get um, more diverse um, talent in motorsport as well. Um, so yeah, that is me. Thank you very much. Thank you.